right into the very heart of Venice. And this provides us with certain opportunities and certain challenges. We are a group of 30 people with 30 suitcases after all, and there's the suitcases. They're on the train and they've got to be taken off the train and transported to the front of the station. And here's how we do it. The baggage brigade springs into action. The baggage team does most of the work. We usually have about 10 volunteers from our group of 30 people. And the other 20 people stand and watch over the bags as we assemble them on the platform and then pull them into the main station area. So remember this secret little side exit if you ever arrive in Venice with some suitcases and you don't want to carry them down a dozen steps in the front of the train station. Just head to your left and there's this handy ramp that will lead you right down to the banks of the Grand Canal. We have arrived. Immediately you are hit by the scenic beauty of this amazing place. The first thing we always do upon checking into a hotel is take an orientation walk and explore the neighborhood. In this case, we find the Piazza San Marco nearby, the main outdoor square of Venice, and we'll come back here again in later programs on our city tour in Gwynedd Basilica. And we'll come back again and again to this unusual, incredible, unique place, for it is one of the most beautiful cities in the entire world, whether you're looking from the top of the belfry of San Marco or listening to the gondolier singing his heart out. None of the praises that you may have ever heard for Venice can be equal to the magnificent and stupendous reality of this tranquil and dreamy place. Looking at two-dimensional images, whether it be a picture, a movie, or a video, cannot compare to the three-dimensional reality of being surrounded by this Gothic and Byzantine masterpiece. The city exists on its own plane, somewhere between heaven and earth. No other living town on the planet has remained so unchanged for the last 500 years. And yet it's not a static fossil, it's more of a living still life. There's energy, there's excitement, there's passion, there's culture, there's lots of shops for you, there's restaurants, entertainment, alleyways to walk, bridges to cross, and canals always and reflections to admire. No matter which way you look, if you have the proper perspective, you'll find sights to enjoy. There's a reward around every corner in this unbelievable city. We're going to take you far away from the main piazza of San Marco into these little back alleys, these little twisted corners, marble masterpiece of bridges crossing little canals, and surprise you with some ultra-modern touches. All of a sudden you're thrust into the 21st century with a little art gallery and a world of wood. Paint brushes in wood, clothing made of wood, a lady showering in wood. This is the other side of Venice, the hip, avant-garde, and postmodern city. The many young Italians who live here add spice to the rich cultural stew of the city. And you'll see how crowded it can be. The shops have space at a premium. Things are stacked and packed, and walkways go underneath buildings. Tunnels cut through buildings to create new access to the other side. The city comes to life fairly early. It's a rewarding spot to go for an early morning walk as the shopkeepers clean up out front and roll their vans to their vending stations. It's a city that's not in a hurry. There's really no place far to go, so why rush? Just opening up for business and then They'll be closing down in the middle of the afternoon for a two-hour siesta. So if you're going to be shopping, do it between 10 and 12.30 in the morning, or between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. in the evening. Your best chance for finding the shops open. Some people have their hurries, perhaps a tourist on a rush, a schedule that's too frantic to believe, most tourists who come to this city, unfortunately, miss completely the real Venice. 
all they see is the Piazza San Marco and they don't get a chance to come into the little cafes and have a little pizza for two dollars or a cup of espresso for 60 cents standing at the coffee counter. In this way, Venice represents perfectly the basic contradiction, the problem of travel. So many people travel but don't see anything, whereas when we travel, we get to see the place before we leave it. Here's two of our travelers, Tom and Pat, on an early morning stroll. You're watching images photographed during the Hawaii Geographic Society's regular tours of Europe, and we spend two days and two nights right in the heart of Venice. One thing you might find time to do while you're staying in Venice for this period is go up the bell tower. Surrounded by the Loghetta built by Sansovino in the 1540s, the bell tower gives you a pigeon's eye view of the city. Despite the bell, that's not the bell tower, that's the clock tower with the bell of the moors astride the main commercial street that leads out of the Piazza San Marco. And we look down upon the great Byzantine domes of the Basilica, five domes in all. There's an inner shell and an outer shell. You can have a grand view of the sweeping plain of red tile roofs of the city. As you can see, there is nothing modern about it. There are no high-rises in Venezia. All constructed during the last thousand years and remaining true to its historical roots, the city is a living museum. The five bells of St. Mark told the hour, so beware if you're going up on the hour, wear your earplugs or get your fingers ready to stick in your ears unless you love the sound of loud bells booming. You look down on the Lion of St. Mark standing on his pedestal in the Piazzetta and the snail staircase will take you there later in the program on our walking tour. A unique external spiral staircase leading up the side of a palace. At the top of the Campanile, you can walk around 360 degrees and view all sides of the city. Looking out upon Santa Maria della Salute and the great Piazza San Marco. You can even make a phone call from the top if you need to. And yes, there's an elevator. You don't have to walk up and down, although you can if you wish. As we descend back to the piazza, and one of the great sports here is playing with the pigeons. They're trying to control the size of this huge pigeon herd with birth control pills. And yet the sidewalk merchants are more than happy to sell you a little bag of pigeon food so you can attract the birds to yourself. And surround yourself in childlike amazement. The arcades of the piazza form a grand renaissance sheltered shopping alley. And the prices here, of course, are extraordinarily high. It's not recommended as a place to spend your money. You'll get better deals in the back streets. But the piazza is always an interesting and exciting and lively place. Now, here's something special going on in front of the grand venerable cafe quadri. There's dozens of police. There's secret service types. There's Italian CIA types. And what is going on? Now let's uh, just pause in our explorations and hang around a little bit and see if we can see what's happening. This must be interesting. This is more than a common event. This is some kind of special police bodyguards for some sort of visiting dignitary. Now who could it be this time? Venice is always close to famous people. This must be some kind of politician. And there it is. Can you see him? It's Gorby. Mikhail and Raisa were having lunch at Cafe Quadri on, of course, an unofficial non-state visit since he's now a deposed head of state. But he gets all the trappings nonetheless. A fellow Russian greeting him and chatting in the native language and hundreds of tourists all jostled around, including yours truly, trying to get a good look. It gets pretty wild here, pretty crazy, because this is Italian paparazzi style. These guys were all pushing and angling and shoving to get their picture. Meanwhile, their Italian Secret Service is 
equally pushy on the other side, trying to keep them away and yet allow them a generous opportunity to get close to this great leader, a man who helped take us out of the Cold War. Notice Raisa giving him a tug. Perhaps she was the power behind the throne after all. His perestroika and glasnos opened the door in Russia for all of the many reforms that have tumbled through since he left power. Considering the total chaos in Russia today, perhaps he'll be coming back to power someday. All the paparazzi line him up for a classic shot with the basilica in the background. They're all pushing and shoving to get their picture. It looks like Gorby is running for something here. Ever the politician. Now these photographers are creating quite a show of their own. Let's have a look at these crazy guys. It's always exciting to see a famous figure in person, especially one of such global importance as Gorbachev and Raisa. And then off they go, they disappear back into their private world, getting on their boat and cruising away off into the horizon. The three flagpoles in front of the basilica are actually ship masts and symbolize the vast naval power that once made Venice the most wealthy city in the world. Well, it's been a busy morning. Now we're heading for lunch. You can pick from a hundred different restaurants in the city and hardly ever go wrong. So don't be anxious about looking for the best restaurant or the cheapest restaurant. Just pick whatever looks good at the moment when you're hungry and walk in and order what you wish. There's pizzas and pastas, fish, meats, all kinds of treats. If you like, you can just have a simple pasta for about $8. Pizzas would generally cost about 10 or 11 dollars. And they are good. We're a little bit away from the main Piazza San Marco, so in this kind of a family style restaurant, you get even more value for the money. And it has a delightful outdoor ambience. One of the most popular dishes is spaghetti with clams. Spaghetti alla vongole.